Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. What if I told you that if you are one of the first batch buyers that you got totally ripped off? Yeah, let's talk about it. The Creality K1 is their first attempt at the out of the box experience that you will have never seen before. It is a fully clipper based printer, it houses a build volume of 220x220x250, 220 220 it has fully automated bed mesh leveling, it houses input shaping and it can provide you with a passively heated build room of about 42 degrees. It can reach insane accelerations with more than 400mm a second of print speeds. If you are new to the channel, hi my name is Eve, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion of the Creality K1 and one thing you should know is that this is not a sponsored product, this is fully paid for just like you guys. So about the ripped off parts, this printer when it came out the first batches went for about 650 to 700 euros. So I paid I think about 675 euros and now with the Black Friday deals you can get this printer as low as for I thought it was 350 euros. Rose. Yikes! This printer is only six months old and it already started to go on sale for almost half of the price. I have close to 10 days of printing on this machine and I have quite a few things to say about. First of all, we have a major design flaw and that is going to be the top lid. As I have showed you in another video, this PTFE tube is going to scratch up this little piece of plastic, giving you a permanent mark of what you have printed. Now luckily, there are plenty of fixes and here is mine. This is what I call the speed bump. I'm going to link to it, you can download it right over there, which means that there is a little hump on the side, which makes room for the cable chain to ride into it, so we don't get a cable chain that is squished into the corner. Then when the first batches shipped, we had a major shit show with the extruder and the hot end. The hot end was okay in my opinion, it was a bit fragile, but the extruder was absolutely and complete garbage. Now luckily they solved that quite quickly I think you could ask for the new one we have a version 3 which is in this one that came with the power boost kit. The version 3 fixed all the problems that were with the Creality K1 except for one and that is going to be the VFA artifacting. And if this is the first time you hear about VFA artifacting you can see that there are a lot of ripples on this surface and on this surface and this is what we call VFA artifacting. One funny thing is that I went to Forum Next this year and I had a little talk with William from Creality which claimed that there was going to be some firmware fixes that would solve the rippling. And we had a firmware fix and this is the result. I have showed you that the backside has quite a lot of rippling but we can see some improvements on the other sides. We started at 60 millimeters a second and we went up to 350 millimeters a second and we can see that the VFA artifacting is a lot better in the lower region which was the problem region. We saw that at uh, 150 millimeters a second and lower the VFA artifacting was a lot worse and we can see that it is yeah, we could say it's largely fixed now, but we can see that at the 45 and the 60 degree corners that there is quite a lot of artifacting. And this is because the movement of the print head is combined with the two motors and we can see that this introduces a lot of vibration that the system, the input shaper in this one, cannot resolve. And that, in my opinion, are the only things that are worth complaining about the VFA artifacting and then the bad design, which is solvable with this riser. Now let's talk about some of the marketing claims. In here is a nozzle system that should be able to deliver 35 cubic millimeters of flow. Well, I have done my testing and uh, hmm, not really. <laughs> So I have tested the flow with PLA, PETG, ABS, would recommend to stay below the minus 5% of under extrusion. So everything more than 5% in my opinion is not tolerable. So we bumped up the hot end to 250 to 230 and 210 and these were the results. We can see that at 210 we are starting to lose flow between 20 and 22 cubic millimeters but if we bump up to 230 we could easily go to 25 cubic millimeters and if we bump it to the extreme and that would be 250 degrees then we reach 30 millimeters cubed. 
so we are not far away from the claimed 35 but i would say that somewhere between 25 and 30 is going to be optimistic for any kind of pla filament we also did the same testing for abs plus from eson and we have the following results at 240 we could see some major under extrusion past the 24 millimeters cubed then at 260 we were almost able to reach 29 cubic millimeters and if we are looking at the 280 degrees results it was about 32 millimeters cubed so we are not far away from the 35 but honestly the 35 it's a bit of a reach and then the next filament that we tested was the eSun PETG and there we could see the same results we had 240 260 and 280 degrees 260 we were able to reach 32 and if we bumped it up to 280 we could actually reach the 35 cubic millimeter squared if you do that with PETG at 280 you are going to have a lot of stringing so I would not recommend you to use 280 degrees and then the last thing I wanted to test was the Creality branded Hyper PLA or the fast melting of fast PLA. We used 190, 210 and 230 degrees and at 230 degrees we were able to reach 25 cubic millimeters. So the Hyper PLA it should be high flowing while in my case I saw a major drawback or you have to print a lot harder which is not the point of using a Hyper PLA. But in all honesty, if we compare the results of the Hyper PLA with the uh, regular PLA Plus from Eason, then we could see that at the same temperature of 230 degrees, that the Hyper PLA was a little bit better than the PLA Plus from Eason, but it was marginal. I also did some testing on flexibles, and this is TPU that is used to make some kind of a chainmail. Let's remove it from the belt plate. This was printed at 100 millimeters a second which is quite fast for TPU and uh, I think the Creality K1 handles the TPU quite well honestly. And after peeling it off we can see that we get some kind of a chain mail which is super cool, it is highly flexible, it is really cool to use in some kind of a clothing system and it is super resistant of tearing. Now taking a closer look, this was actually a great test. These are all with bridges and you know that TPU do not like to be bridged. Well, on the Creality K1 Speedy, this was absolutely not a problem. And we get the added benefit that this is super strong. So if you want to make some kind of a cosplay, some kind of a clothing, then TPU chainmail, <laughs> this is freaking indestructible. Then we did some testing. We have printed PTG. This is 0.2, this is 0.1, and then we have this kitty cat. This was at 300 millimeters a second. This was printed at 300 millimeters a second and this was printed a little bit slower at 200 millimeters a second and the PETG it just came out nice. If you wonder if it prints ABS, yes it does, this is ABS and this has also been printed at 300 millimeters a second. This is the 0.2 version, a little bit slower at 250. This is also a really good result honestly. And then we have one at 0.1 layer height and this also came out very nice. I have to say that even for ABS this is just looking fantastic. And then the last thing, this is some kind of a silk-ish PLA. It just came out nice. It is multicolored. This is by Arion, if I'm not mistaken. Printed at 300 millimeters a second. Then we have the rougher PLA version. This is with the 0.2 layer line. And we can see that there is a little bit more of a, yeah, how should we call it, layering. But it's also because PLA is highly reflective, I think. If you give this a little nice base coat, yeah, the, the results would be a lot better. This is printed with the 0.1 layer height and this is really looking nice. We can see uh, some of the VFA artifacting that I was talking about on this one because it's highly reflective. All the little rippling that you can see on flat surfaces, uh, that is the VFA artifacting that I am talking about. But the results are fair. This was before the last update and I think with the last update it would be even less noticeable. Right over here, for instance, this is a really great spot to see the VFA artifacting. Now these days string art is really into the game and we have printed this little skull. This is also 
uh, string art but the kicker is this is printed in ABS and for being ABS this is just absolutely amazing it's flexible it is suspended so this is fully ABS printed and even the stringing it is not bad it's not perfect it's still ABS because we have to keep the cooling low but the results of printing this in ABS on the Cruella TK1 yeah this is just great now one thing I want to mention about the bed is there is a flex plate system on it and you can see that I have placed some clips on the edges and that is because I like to do a lot of ABS printing. Now one thing that I have noticed printing with ABS it is fully possible if you are not going too big absolutely perfect results. One thing I would mention is that if you are going to go for full build plates then you will start to see that the flex plate is going to start warping like this and your prints are ruined. Now the magnet in here is not that strong so that is why I would recommend you if you are going to do huge ABS prints to clamp down your flex plate so you prevent the warping. Then the last thing I wanted to try out was the vase mode on the Creal TK1 and it came out absolutely amazing. Even here you can see that the VFA artifacting is quite noticeable. For instance this was printed at 350 millimeters a second which was quite fast it is quite large we absolutely maxed the build plate this is actually a really cool print but we can see that there is a little bit of artifacting but i would say that this is acceptable but if we lower the print speeds then we could see that at these lower parts that the vfa artifacting is getting a lot worse but this was tested before the firmware update so i think that we will see a little bit better results now one one thing I haven't tested is carbon filled filaments in this printer but changing the nozzle I don't see any problems why you shouldn't be able to print carbon filled filaments. Then let's talk a bit about speed. You are able to reach more than 400 millimeters a second with the 0.4 that is in this system pre-installed. But this is only possible if you are going to use very low layer heights. And I mean with that the 0.1 millimeters. Now one thing I noticed is it's going to be hard to reach more than 300 millimeters a second with the default slicer. So the 0.2 layer height is a bit too high to reach more than 300 millimeters a second. And that is because of the flow restrictions that you have. I would recommend you to do some flow testing and put that into your slicer uh, coupled to the filament that you are using and in my case I was able to reach about uh, 300 millimeters a second at the 0.2 layer height and 400 plus on the 0.1 millimeter. The auto bed mesh leveling seems to be spotty but with the last firmware update we could see that bed mesh leveling was uh, quite a bit more consistent the only thing that i always have to do is put a z offset on it so in the past it was a 0.03 negative offset so to get it close to the build plate now with the new firmware i have to do the opposite so i have to go up with the nozzle because it is too close not really sure what's happening with the bad mesh leveling but if you use a z offset then the mesh leveling absolutely works. Now there is some lighting in this enclosure although it seems to be a little bit dim I would like to see it a bit brighter in the future. Then we also have the AI camera in here it is usable but it seems that the focus point is more around here so everything that is right about here is not in focus and you don't see what is happening. So I think this reality camera is made for the K1 Max. The K1 Max is a lot bigger and the focus point is is more in the middle on the K1 Max. But it is still usable to see if you're going to eat spaghetti as dinner. Now let's talk a bit about the app and the slicer that you use to slice these things. The slicer is okay. It's based on Cura, but it has some limitations on the stuff you can do. There is for instance no uh, support blocking feature on it, which is honestly really annoying. And we had a lot of weird bugs in it. But I have to say in the last six months, the slicer got a lot better. And now I can print everything with confidence. There is no weird things going on, but we still do not have support blocking in it. Would I rather use Cura? Absolutely. Quality Print is just a skinned version of Cura and they disabled a lot of features that you cannot use. Now, 
It is still very usable, although if you are trying to use Cura because this is a closed off printer, you will not be able to use the Wi-Fi capabilities of this printer. Speaking about the Wi-Fi capabilities, this integrates seamlessly with Creality Print. It is absolutely a huge plus to use. It is super easy to transfer files and STLs from your PC to this printer and you can even remotely start your print right there from the slicer. You can also see the the details on your slicer then you will have have a nice camera overview you will see the speeds and all that but also that page is very closed off you can change some things like fan speeds and temperatures but that's about it you are not able to do the tweaking on bat mesh or anything about that now luckily they made it possible to root this printer very easily so they provide all the information that you need to get root access of this printer which should be enabling you to use whatever slicer that you want in combination with something like a fluid for instance then let's talk about the phone app it is really an ad infestation of your life i have a feeling it is really violating you on all sides of the planet so uh, yeah it is not a good time using it i tried to slice something it is a bit clunky in my opinion but it works you don't have a lot of options to tweak settings which is also a major downside but the only plus of this app thing would be that you can remote in to see what is happening then you get a nice camera view of what is going on but that has been i would say about a 50 50 of a success chance it is flaky at best the camera doesn't load uh, half of the time so it is really annoying to see what is going on with the print inside and if you are trying to slice anything on that app it is very limited i would only use it to remote in and look at your prints now that leaves us with one question should you buy this printer now if you would ask me six months ago if you should buy this printer i would say i'm not sure the bamboo lab p1 P, I think it is, as I have no clue what they are called. We're very close to the price point of the Creality K1, but we have seen major price drops in the last two months, and now you can buy this printer for 350 euros, which is absolutely one of the cheapest, fully enclosed, fully well-built printers you can get to this date. This is their first major production, fully finished printer that works decently out out of the box even though we have to do some little tweaks here and there and maybe get the riser but except for that riser this printer just works am i happy about the vfa artifacting no not really but even the prusa xxl and the bamboo lab have some vfa artifacting i would try to say uh, if you can stay above uh, 120 or 150 millimeters a second you are going to be just fine now that being said i really don't care if you buy this printer i think I think it's an all round good system for the price. It is unbeatable. I have nothing to win. If you buy this printer, I only have to win your subscription and your thumbs up. The only thing I would ask you that if you enjoyed this little review of the Creality K1 Speedy, that you subscribe to the channel, give me a big thumbs up and let me know down below if you are going to buy it or not. Well, that being said, I would say don't run away just yet. Maybe subscribe to the channel because as you can see we have a lot of filament and resins to test and this time we will have some impact testing going on. And if you made it so far in the video, thanks so much guys and I'll see you in the next one.